So, topic today is another religious topic. So I'm going to be talking about the my theory, my philosophy of the flowers of the East. And this goes back the in the first time as well. It's looking at what's going on in culture now, but it's a it's a it's a parallel map over of what happened in the ancient world. So if you look at ancient Rome, Rome was in a similar state to where we are now. They were experiencing a state of decadence. The old gods had lost their grip because they were born from a time that was different. That it did, that there wasn't a match over. So the pagan gods of Rome were born in a time when they were small-scale farmers and they were just a small tribe in on the west coast of Italy. Whereas by the time of 0 AD, you're looking at the a Roman Republic, a Roman a Roman Republic, a Roman controlled world which expands from Spain over to the Middle East. It's a it's a very large empire and controls a lot of North Africa as well. And that's a lot of power for one group to have and it's a very different situation. So you can see why the gods that developed in that time might have lost their grip on the consciousness of the people because that's religion needs to have that grip it needs that you need to feel that connection to it and obviously those pagan gods had lost their connection and the romans had grown somewhat decadent now maybe this is just something that happens all of the time that if you if a culture develops with a with a religion it eventually loses its meaning um Maybe that's inherent in the process. But what Rome started to do, what you start to see happening uh, at the turn 2020 years ago, kind of at that time of the Roman Republic becoming the Roman Empire, what you start to see happening is that Rome starts to import mystery religions. It starts to fill this void with things from the empire, things from the the distant reaches of the Republic. So you have the Mithras uh, cult from... The East, I believe it's Iranian in its origins, and that was a very popular among the Roman legions. There's been Mithras uh, shrines found as far west as Hadrian's Wall in the north of England, on the border between England and Scotland. So on, you think of coming from Iran all the way over there in the ancient world, that was, you know, that travelled far and wide. So that spread very popular among the legions, and this was a religion around the, the bull, uh, Mithras and it was the sacrifice of the bull and partaking of that divine sacrifice. I'm not sure of the exact details. I know there was similarities to the Christian to the Christian uh, service ritualistically but I believe it was more um, much more masculine um, in terms of that bull energy so I'm not sure what the place of women was in that. So that's the first religion that they, they sort of imported that first mystery cult that they seek to fill the void with. The second was uh, our, our Christianity, which we know very well. So that got imported from the Middle East, from Israel. And that was obviously the cult of, of Jesus, of this, this guy who was the saviour born, son of a carpenter, and born to be king of the Jews and was sacrificed and died for our sins on the cross and we can partake of that by eating of the bread by being becoming baptized and drinking drinking his blood and eating his body in a ritualistic form and so that's uh, the second religion and the third uh, is the Isis cult from Egypt so as Isis was the mother goddess she was the mother of not the mother of all the gods. So her and Osiris would have been the very top of the food chain. Horus, their son, was the god of the sun. Son of the... Yeah. So Osiris is kind of a... He's a similar Christ figure in his own religion, actually. But uh, Isis ended up being being the cult. So that mother goddess energy, which you can read about that cult in depth in The uh, Golden Ass of Apuleius, which is... A uh, book by uh, a guy called Apuleius, written in Roman times. It's a it's a novel, but it, it contains a lot of parts of the the Isis mysteries. And so, Rome started importing these different mysteries in order to try and fill that void, and the the void left by the lack of meaning. But it wasn't just that; they had more. There was the schools of the philosophers, the Epicureans, and the Stoics and the academics. 
the academics slash skeptics who would be descended from Plato's academy. So those three schools were very influential in in Rome. And you can also see Romans going to the Eleusinian Mysteries. So this was a very popular um, initiation that took place in Eleusis in just about, is it about 20 kilometers north of Athens. And it was a ritualistic thing. It was a journey to the underworld. They took a a uh, psychedelic, well, as far as we know anyway, a psychedelic cocktail. And there was a whole ritual around it. It wasn't just psychedelics, but that was obviously the mind-altering chemical. And then there was the ritual that reinforced that. And that was a transformative thing. And... So you that's that's that was the situation in ancient Rome, and I think if you map that over onto modernity, there's a lot of similarities. And if you look at what's happened, Christianity over the last few hundred years has lost its grip on the Western psyche. And it it doesn't hold us, we don't really believe it anymore. It's lost that that depth of holding certainly the whole population as it did in the Middle Ages, it's lost that grip. And so what we've seen happen in the last 100 years, last 150 years, is we've started doing what the Romans did. We've started importing magic from the East. So these flowers of the East. So you can see the popularity of Buddhism, Hinduism, the Hare Krishnas and all the different aspects of the Vedas. Meditation has become a big thing. There's a lot of meditation retreats, a lot of chanting, yoga, these Eastern practices being imported, but also the Chinese, the Taoist, the the Zen aspects of Buddhism. So there's all these Eastern religions, these Eastern Oriental ways of viewing the world. And they're kind of, uh, there's something alien and perhaps the exotic nature of them. Has a has a power that Christianity has lost because it's grown on our own soil, or it's 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 so integrated with our soil, and so it's the effect that Christianity perhaps had on the Roman mind might be similar to what Buddhism or Hinduism is doing to the to the Western mind. So we get fascinated with this idea. I know when I was young, I was fascinated by the idea of enlightenment, and there was a great hunger in me to to become enlightened, and it's kind of a it's an intoxication really, but. Maybe there's nothing wrong with that, but it's a... Well, intoxication is the very nature of feeling the meaning of religion. So I can certainly say that that enlightenment path and that idea of, of the surrender to it, it was very, very intoxicating and it really gripped my consciousness. And perhaps that's what we're looking for from the from the East. And I know when I've sat Vipassana retreats that I would come away from that being like, I should just do this all the time, I should go serve at other retreat centres, I should just constantly I should be perma-meditating um, and if that isn't the, the power of a religion of the tapping into the religious aspect of the mind then I don't really know what it is so it's, we've looked at these flowers of the east and those could be the, the map over of the mystery cults, I don't think we need to import philosophies necessarily although stoicism has become very popular again I suppose science is a, is a bit of a denuded philosophy, but you see even the likes of Carl Sagan and and Stephen Hawking kind of looking at the, the, the grandeur and beauty of science. So that might be a similar way of looking at the world to some of the old religions as well. If you look at uh, Lucretius's On the Nature of Things, there's a similar sort of philosophical outlook as there is in the scientific worldview. The atomism, the belief that this is all there is and in the afterlife, it, well, it's just death, and so observe the beauty of the universe, the beauty of what we have. What's given is so precious and so beautiful, it's enough. So there's an appeal in that. And then in terms of the the Eleusis, I mean, that's, that's very prevalent now. The Eleusinian Mysteries, you can find it in the Amazonian rainforest if you want to go on a 10-day ayahuasca retreat. Or there's San Pedro, there's mushrooms. So there's all these psychedelics and that's becoming something that we're realising is very potent for transformation. So I, I'm seeing this similar trend between the Roman Empire, which reached its its peak and kind of lost its connection to that religious feelings 
that were born that, that it grew up with and so it looks to the east it looks to the far reaches of its influence and grasp and reach and that's something similar to what we're doing look we're looking to the far east and we're importing these religions because they're having an effect on us they're those those exotic flowers of the east Jung actually talks about this in a book called Psychology Psychology of Kundalini Yoga and he's concerned that because it's not grown on home soil he says that you're taking a flower from uh, that's grown up on a completely different root system a completely different grounding and you've plucked it and you've brought it over and he said he said that uh, these eastern religions are poison to the western mind and I don't think I agree with Jung on that uh, because if you look, it might just be a natural trend of culture. I mean, just looking at the Romans doing the same. And maybe that's that's not a map over, but it definitely seems to be a natural thing. That it makes sense that the old religion would lose its grip. And it makes sense that you'd want to import that exotic thing. I get his criticism that it's grown up on a completely foreign soil for completely different reasons. And I don't think that this is just a a western thing in terms of like looking to the east i was talking to a man from malaysia he would have been from a chinese background his parents would have left china after mao's cultural revolution and he converted to catholicism and this brought great shame on the family in in the east in the chinese culture you're supposed to honor the ancestors and there's taoist confucian ancestor there's a kind of a, a mix of of different belief system but in terms of that family thing he was turning his back on tradition and that brings shame on the family because it reflects poorly but he felt so compelled he said there's this there's this uh vision or this um understanding this this there's a halo basically around christianity in the east and he said when he grew up he just thought wow catholics they're so strict you know they're so devout and there was something so exotic to him about christianity this he's found it like to be such a strict ascetic kind of religion that they were so dedicated to god so dedicated to um to that truth and and to honoring that truth and so he became catholic and i think he came to ireland and received a great shock because um the stereotypes of ireland are pretty accurate and while we are religious, or we would have been, I imagine when he came, definitely it's it's faded in recent years. But there would have been that strong religious thing, but people are not that strongly, we're strong in the lip service of religion, certainly. But when everyone's Catholic, I guess you don't have that strength of identity. Like I see it with the Mormons, they have a the strength of faith, and maybe that comes from being a microcosmic us surrounded by a mass of them so the tension against that membrane creates a strong religious um, foothold but i believe in utah they're quite religious so uh, maybe that doesn't stand up but certainly when he came to ireland he got this shock which i imagine many of us would get if we went to the east and we saw the authentic origins and author authentic nature of these religions so the importing them gives them this exotic thing because you are just plucking the flower rather than the roots of maybe disillusion and habituation that would come with it in the sense of our habituation with Christianity wasn't felt by this man and so he just saw the flower of Christianity and was amazed by it and yeah so that would be kind of my my insight that there's a map over between what was happening in Rome and what was ha what's happening now with us looking to the east looking to import these other religions and yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, g give us a thumbs up, subscribe. And if you have any comments or feedback, give us a message, give us a comment underneath. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Till next time.